we're going to start with sensitivity. And you can see how I highlighted words in blue and red. I want you to take great emphasis of these highlighted words. The first one is called sensitivity. Sensitivity means the ability of a test to correctly identify patients who are positive or who have disease. This is a true positive. The test showed that there was disease and the patient has disease. That means the test was correct to say that the patient is positive. The types of questions you're going to get about sensitivity are they're going to say, what type of test will show disease when the patient actually has disease? Or they'll say, which describes a test that was correct or a test that was true after the patient was found to be positive under the gold standard? Those are key words for sensitivity. Overall, sensitivity is the ability to correctly diagnose a patient with disease. If you don't remember anything I just said, remember that. Sensitivity is the test ability to correctly diagnose a positive diagnosis. Specificity. Specificity is the ability for a test to correctly identify patients who are negative or do not have a disease, which is true negative. The test was correct to say the patient is negative. Overall, specificity means a test ability to correctly diagnose a patient negative for disease. So sensitivity is the ability to diagnose a patient with disease and specificity is the ability to diagnose a patient without disease or to say there is no disease, to correctly say there's no disease. This is a true negative. So the test was correct to say the patient is negative for specificity. In sensitivity, the test was correct to say the patient is positive. A positive predictive value has two methods. Under the true positive approach, the test finds a disease positive and the test was correct because the patient was positive under the gold standard. Under the second approach, the false positive, the test was incorrect or wrong to find disease or to say the patient is positive because the patient is negative under the gold standard. That's a false positive. A false positive means that the patient was initially diagnosed with disease but then under the gold standard, it found out that the patient was negative. So the initial positive result is actually negative, hence false positive. Under the true positive approach, everything was correct. The test showed that there's disease and then the gold standard showed that there's disease. Now, what this is talking about, if you find something, let's say you find a tumor in someone's heart, you're 100% sure it's not an artifact. You put in the report, I found a tumor, you recommend a cardiac MRI, if it's clinically indicated or whatever. Then they get an MRI, and they find out in the MRI there was no tumor. That means that initially, when you diagnose that patient with a tumor, you're saying it's a true positive, but actually it's a false positive because under the gold standard, there is no tumor. So under the false negative approach, you do an echo and you don't find a tumor. And you say there's nothing going on, but the patient's symptomatic, the patient's passing out, and they can't figure out why. Then they do a cardiac MRI, and they find a huge myxoma in the left atrium. I don't, I don't know how you would miss that on the echo, but for, just for this analogy, this is how it goes. So you don't find a myxoma in the echo, but then in the cardiac MRI, you find a myxoma. This is a false negative because the patient is actually positive for disease. So the test was wrong. These are the key words you have to look for. And the types of questions they're gonna ask you on this one, what type of test will show a true positive and then after the gold standard will show that the patient is really positive. And that would be a positive predictive value. Or which of the following will show a false positive but the test was incorrect or wrong because the patient is actually negative under the gold standard. Then we have a negative predictive value. And under the negative predictive value, under the true negative approach, this is saying that the test predicted correctly or states that the patient is negative under the gold standard. That's the true negative approach. True negative means it's truly negative. Then under the false negative approach, that means that 
the test does not find disease as results are negative, but the patient does have disease. This indicates a false negative and the patient is positive under the gold standard. So the test was wrong or incorrect. Which one of these could you tell me will indicate a test that was wrong or incorrect? Here's what you're gonna look for. If they ask you which of the following is a test that was wrong or incorrect to correctly diagnose disease, you're gonna look for the false negative approach for negative predictive value, mm -hmm. or you're gonna look for a false positive approach under the positive predictive value. These approaches were incorrect in diagnosing disease, the false positive and the false negative. And then they'll say, which test was correct or true? Just write that, was correct or true. The test that indicates a correct or true result are the true positive approach under the positive predictive value and the true negative approach under the negative predictive value. These are all keywords you're gonna look for. The gold standard means that there's a certain test that they use after we scan a patient with ultrasound because with ultrasound, there's so many things that can get confused between an artifact and disease. And they use other modalities to kind of back up what we say or to help support what we find. An angiogram would be a good gold standard because an angiogram, let's say you find a blood clot in someone's leg, they want to get further imaging just to make sure you actually did find a clot. So they'll do an angiogram where they inject contrast into the veins and they'll see if any of the contrast is blocked or goes all the way through. When we're talking about the ideal value for negative predictive value, the ideal value is one or 100%. And that's the same for, I thought I had that up here. That's the same for positive predictive value. The ideal value for is one or 100%. Okay, so true positives equals your patient has disease in reality and the test results does show disease. The patient is positive for disease and in reality, the exam was correct. These are true positives. Then in false negatives, your patient has disease, but the test does not show disease. The patient is positive for disease in reality, but the test was incorrect. False positives equals or means that your patient does not have disease, but the test results does show disease. The patient is negative for disease in reality, but the test was incorrect. Your true negatives, your patient does not have disease in reality, and the test results does not show disease. The patient is negative for disease and the test results were correct. How do we know that the test was correct? What did I just say? What's the one thing that will back up the first initial test? You're gonna go and do the gold standard. The gold standard will determine if the patient is actually negative or positive. Let's see this. I'm gonna see how good you are right now. What do you think goes in this square right here? TP. What about this one? FP. What about here? TN will go oh here. God. TN and this is FN. You'll have to know equation for statistics. And let's say that they give you a question like this and they say, what is the sensitivity and the specificity? Actually, let's just stick with one. What is the sensitivity of this diagram right here? How do we calculate sensitivity? These are the equations for sensitivity. What I did for my test was I quickly drew these four boxes and then I put in, let's go down here. I quickly put in A, T, P, B, F, P, C, F, N, and D, T, N. But I think now you, <laughs> You can't start writing notes until you start the test. So you'll have to, you have to actually start your test and then write notes, which is kind of unfair. If they ask you, what's the sensitivity of this? You have to remember that sensitivity is equal to A divided by A plus C or your true positives divided by your true positives plus your false negatives. That means A divided by A plus C. And it has to be in that order. 
you have to go a divided by a plus c. You can't change the a and c. For instance, so you can't go a divided by c plus a. You can't do that. You'll get a completely different answer. You have to go a divided by a plus c. And the way I remember that is you just draw an arrow, just draw an arrow, and the arrow means you're gonna start with this number for the numerator and the denominator. Because you have an arrow, let's get that arrow going here. So this is the arrow here. The arrow, wherever it starts, that means that that number is gonna be first in the numerator and the denominator. That means you're gonna have 31 on top, and then in the denominator, you're gonna have 31 plus 33. It's always plus. They're all plus. They're not times. This is speaking for the denominator, right? So that's sensitivity. A divided by A plus C, or TP divided by TP plus FN. What if they say, what's the specificity? How do you calculate the specificity of this? And by the way, for this, the sensitivity is going to be 31 divided by 31 plus 33, right here, sensitivity. The specificity, well, what is specificity? What's sensitivity again? Tell me what sensitivity actually means. Sensitivity is the ability of a test to accurately diagnose a patient with disease, so they're positive. What's specificity? Specificity means that the test accurately diagnosed the patient with negative results. It's saying that they're negative and the patient is negative. So the patient, so the test was correct. Specificity in the equation, you're gonna look for D divided by D plus B. And if you look at the arrow, you have to go in this order. Wherever the arrow starts, you're gonna start with this number for the numerator and the denominator. For instance, the equation will be four divided by four plus 28. So specificity, four divided by four plus 28. What in the world is positive predictive value? Well, positive predictive value is A divided by A plus B. You definitely want to memorize each one of these because this will save you so much time on your test. Positive predictive value is A divided by A plus B or your true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. And the arrow that you're going to place is going to be like this. It's going this way. This is your positive predictive value. These are your true positives. These are your false positives. You're going to start with this number here in both the numerator and the denominator. The equation for this will be 31 divided by 31 plus 28. And there we go. 31 divided by mm -hmm. 31 plus 28. That's your positive predictive value. What's positive predictive value again? The mm -hmm. test prove that the initial test was correct and to say that the patient was positive or the false positive approach states that the patient was actually not positive and they were negative under the gold standard. And then we have negative predictive value is true negatives divided by your true negatives plus your false negatives. Then your accuracy is a little bit more trickier than the previous. You're going to divide D plus A divided by A, B, C, D. It's all of them. You probably won't be asked to actually calculate a percentage until you take your vascular boards if you choose to. I think for just the SPI, they'll just give you some numbers and they'll say which one represents the sensitivity or specificity. And then they'll have the different equations listed below, and then you just have to quickly identify which one is correct.